Chapter 1. The Mysterious Signal In the vast, silent expanse of space, a sequence of strange, pulsating signals disrupts the monotony, rippling through the cosmic void to reach the far edges of the solar system. On Earth, the signals catch the attention of the International Space Monitoring Alliance, ISMA, a global network of astronomers and scientists dedicated to the observation of space. The signals, unlike anything humanity has encountered before, prompt a flurry of excitement and curiosity across the world. At ISMA's central observatory, Dr. Lina Nguyen, a leading astrophysicist, becomes the first to isolate and analyze the signals. The patterns are irregular, defying known natural cosmic phenomena, suggesting an intelligent origin. The discovery sets off a media frenzy, with news outlets and social media buzzing with theories ranging from alien communications to elaborate hoaxes. As governments and independent organizations around the globe turn their eyes and resources toward understanding the source and content of the signals, the scientific community is abuzz with speculation. The United Nations convenes an emergency session, resulting in the formation of the Unified Extraterrestrial Investigation Coalition, UEIC, tasked with coordinating a global response to the signals. Dr. Nguyen is appointed as the head of the Scientific Advisory Board for the UEIC, bringing together a team of top experts from various fields, astrophysics, linguistics, engineering, and exobiology, among others. The team's first challenge is to triangulate the source of the signals, which leads them to an astonishing conclusion. The origin is Neptune's orbit, specifically from a previously unnoticed object that defies conventional classification. As the world watches, the coalition faces both skepticism and hope, questions about humanity's place in the universe, and the age-old query of whether we are alone. Amidst mounting pressure, the UEIC makes a bold decision to launch a mission, codenamed Orion's Dawn, to send a crewed spacecraft to investigate the source directly. This mission promises to be humanity's most daring venture into the unknown, a historic endeavor that could change the course of human history. The chapter closes as preparations begin for Project Orion's Dawn, setting the stage for an epic journey into the cosmos. The excitement is palpable, with humanity standing on the brink of potentially its greatest discovery, united by a common goal to answer the call of the universe. Chapter 2. The United Response As news of the mysterious signal spreads like wildfire across the globe, Humanity is gripped by a mixture of fear, wonder, and excitement. Governments, space agencies, and private corporations begin to recognize the magnitude of the discovery and the need for a coordinated effort. The formation of the Unified Extraterrestrial Investigation Coalition, UEIC, marks a historic moment of global unity, as old rivalries and geopolitical tensions are momentarily set aside in the face of the unknown. Behind the scenes, the logistics of forming such a coalition are daunting. Negotiations are intense, with countries vying for leadership roles and contributions to the project. Dr. Lena Nguyen, now at the forefront of the world's attention, works tirelessly with diplomats and scientists to ensure that the mission remains focused on scientific discovery and cooperation, rather than nationalistic pride or profit. Amidst the political maneuvering, tech giants and aerospace companies come forward with offers of support providing cutting-edge technology and resources. Among them, Starward Technologies, led by the charismatic and visionary CEO Alex Rennard, proposes the design of a new spacecraft capable of the journey to Neptune's orbit. This spacecraft, later named Orion's Dawn, becomes a symbol of humanity's ambition and collective will. The public's fascination with the mission grows, with social media buzzing with discussions, theories, and debates about the signals and their implications. Educational institutions incorporate the topic into their curricula, sparking a renewed interest in space exploration and science among students worldwide. Meanwhile, the scientific community is abuzz with activity. The UEIC establishes several research facilities dedicated to the analysis of the signals and the development of technology necessary for the mission. Scientists from diverse disciplines are recruited forming an international team that represents the best of human intellect and spirit. Dr. Nguyen leads a public outreach campaign, explaining the mission's goals and the importance of global cooperation in this endeavor. She becomes a household name, 
embodying the collective hope and curiosity of humanity as it stands on the brink of a new frontier. The chapter culminates with a globally televised event where the UEIC officially announces the launch plan for Orion's Dawn. The event showcases the spacecraft model, introduces key team members, and provides an overview of the mission's objectives. The world watches in awe as humanity takes its first real step toward answering the call of the universe, united by a shared sense of purpose and destiny. The countdown to the launch of Orion's Dawn begins, marking the end of the beginning of humanity's greatest adventure. Chapter 3. Project Orion's Dawn The unveiling of Project Orion's Dawn marks a turning point in human history. The project, named after the mythological hunter who pursued the stars, symbolizes humanity's pursuit of knowledge and its relentless drive to explore the unknown. Behind the scenes, the project is a Herculean effort, involving the collaboration of thousands of scientists, engineers, and visionaries from across the globe. The core of the mission is the Orion's Dawn spacecraft, a marvel of human ingenuity. Designed by Starward Technologies under the leadership of Alex Renard, the spacecraft incorporates revolutionary propulsion technology, life support systems, and communication arrays capable of maintaining contact with Earth across the vast distances of space. Its design is sleek, yet functional, built to withstand the harsh conditions of space travel and the unknown challenges that lie ahead. The selection of the crew becomes a focal point of global attention. The criteria are stringent, seeking not only the best minds and bodies, but also individuals capable of enduring the psychological pressures of deep space travel and the uncertainties of the mission. After a rigorous selection process, a diverse team of eight is chosen each bringing their own expertise and personal stories to the journey. The crew includes Commander Jack Harper, a seasoned astronaut with multiple missions under his belt, known for his calm under pressure and decisive leadership. Dr. Lena Nguyen, the lead scientist whose knowledge of the mysterious signals and dedication to the mission are unmatched. Dr. Aisha Bhatti, an astrobiologist whose expertise could prove crucial in understanding any extraterrestrial life forms they might encounter. Mikhail Ivanov, an engineer specializing in spacecraft systems, responsible for keeping Orion's Dawn operational through the mission. Sofia Alvarez, a communications specialist, tasked with maintaining the link between the spacecraft and Earth, a lifeline for the crew. Dr. Hiro Tanaka, a physicist, whose understanding of cosmic phenomena will guide the crew through the unknown reaches of space. Liam O'Connor, a medical doctor prepared to address the physiological and psychological health of the crew. Zara Patel, a pilot and former military aviator, chosen for her exceptional skill in nerves of steel. The training for the mission is intense, focusing not only on the technical skills needed for space travel, but also on teamwork, problem solving, and survival in extreme conditions. The crew undergoes simulations that test their physical and mental limits, from zero gravity maneuvers to emergency protocols. As the launch date approaches, the crew and the entire project team face a mix of emotions, excitement, fear, anticipation, and the weight of the expectations placed upon them. Humanity's hopes and dreams are with them as they prepare to embark on a journey into the unknown. The chapter closes with a poignant scene of the crew boarding Orion's Dawn, their silhouettes cast against the glowing spacecraft as dawn breaks over the launch site. The world holds its breath as the countdown begins, marking the start of an epic voyage that could redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. The engines ignite, and Orion's dawn lifts off, carrying the hopes and dreams of Earth into the starlit sky. Chapter 4. Assembling the Crew The selection and assembly of the Orion's dawn crew is a meticulous process that captures the imagination and attention of the world. Each member is chosen not just for their expertise and skills, but also for their ability to work under extreme conditions and their adaptability to unforeseen challenges. Their backgrounds are diverse, reflecting humanity's multifaceted nature, yet each shares a common thread of courage and curiosity. Commander Jack Harper is a figure of quiet strength and resilience. A veteran of space, his experience and steady hand make him the natural leader of the mission. Harper's leadership style is rooted in trust and respect, qualities that he fosters within the team. 
His previous missions have taught him the unpredictability of space, lessons that he carries into the preparation for Orion's dawn. Dr. Lena Nguyen, the architect of the mission's scientific agenda, brings an unmatched intellect and passion for discovery. Her initial analysis of the mysterious signals was the key to humanity's response. Nguyen views the mission as the culmination of her life's work, a chance to answer the age-old question of whether we are alone in the universe. Dr. Aisha Badi, with her expertise in astrobiology, is the heart of the crew's scientific quest. Her optimism and wonder at the potential of discovering extraterrestrial life forms are infectious. Body's research has always been driven by the desire to understand life's diversity and adaptability, making her an essential voice in the mission's exploration efforts. Mikhail Ivanov is the backbone of the spacecraft's operational integrity. An engineer with a genius for solving complex problems, Ivanov's role is critical to the success of the mission. His pragmatic approach to challenges and his ability to remain calm under pressure are invaluable assets to the crew. Sofia Alvarez, the communication specialist, is the link between Orion's dawn and Earth. Her expertise ensures that the crew's findings and experiences are shared with humanity. Alvarez's role goes beyond technical duties. She is a reminder of the connection to home, a beacon of hope and reassurance. Dr. Hiro Tanaka, a physicist, brings a deep understanding of the cosmos. His knowledge is pivotal in navigating the spacecraft through space's unknown variables. Tanaka's fascination with the universe's mysteries drives him to uncover the secrets hidden in its depths. Liam O'Connor, the medical doctor, is tasked with maintaining the physical and mental well-being of the crew. His expertise in space medicine and his empathetic nature make him a guardian of the crew's health, a role he takes with utmost seriousness. Zara Patel, the pilot, is chosen for her extraordinary skills and her experience in high-stress environments. Her precision and calmness in the face of danger ensure the spacecraft's safe journey. Patel's adventurous spirit and determination embody the mission's exploratory essence. As they come together, the crew undergoes rigorous training, bonding over shared challenges and their collective mission. Their diverse perspectives and skills blend into a cohesive unit, ready to face the unknown. The chapter delves into their personal motivations, fears, and hopes as they prepare for the journey, providing a deeper understanding of the individuals behind the mission. The chapter closes on the eve of the launch, with the crew sharing a quiet moment of reflection. They stand at the threshold of the unknown, aware of the dangers that lie ahead, but driven by the unyielding human desire to explore and discover. As they look up at the stars, the vastness of space awaits them, a testament to the journey that humanity is about to embark upon. Chapter 5. Launch into the Unknown The world stands still as dawn breaks over the launch site of Project Orion's dawn. The air is thick with anticipation, an electric current of excitement and apprehension pulsating through the gathered crowds and millions watching from afar. The launch site is a hive of activity, a symphony of final checks and preparations, as the team ensures that every system is go, every contingency plan in place. At the heart of this maelstrom of activity, stands Orion's Dawn, a sleek vessel that embodies humanity's hopes and dreams. It is more than a spacecraft. It is a beacon of human ambition, a testament to what can be achieved when the world unites for a common purpose. Inside the spacecraft, the crew of Orion's Dawn is a picture of calm amidst the storm. Commander Jack Harper's voice is steady as he checks in with each crew member, their responses a chorus of readiness. Dr. Lena Nguyen looks at the data one last time the mysterious signals that started it all now a silent promise of the discoveries to come. The atmosphere is one of solemnity, the weight of the moment not lost on anyone. As the countdown begins, a hush falls over the crowd outside. The final moments tick down, each second an eternity. Then, with a roar that shakes the earth itself, Orion's dawn lifts off. Flames and smoke billow as the spacecraft climbs higher, piercing the sky, a brilliant point of light against the dawn. The ascent is a marvel of precision engineering and human ingenuity. The crew, strapped in and monitoring the systems, feels the familiar push of gravity as they leave the Earth's atmosphere behind. The moment is surreal, a mixture of exhilaration and disbelief at the journey they have embarked upon. Orbit is achieved flawlessly, and as the engines cut off, 
A brief silence envelops the spacecraft, a moment of peace amidst the chaos of launch. It is a silence filled with potential, with the vastness of space stretching out before them, an uncharted expanse waiting to be explored. Back on Earth, the successful launch is met with cheers and tears, a collective breath released. The mission control room is a scene of jubilant relief, as the team acknowledges the first hurdle crossed, aware of the many challenges that lie ahead. The crew of Orion's Dawn takes a moment to marvel at the Earth from their vantage point, a fragile blue orb hanging in the vastness of space. It is a poignant reminder of what they have left behind, of the planet that unites them all. Commander Harper's voice breaks the silence, a call to action that resonates with the crew. They have a mission to complete, a journey into the unknown in search of answers. The spacecraft maneuvers out of Earth's orbit, setting a course for Neptune, where the mysterious signals originated. The chapter closes on Orion's dawn, as it fades into the blackness of space, a lone vessel on a historic quest. It is a moment of transition, from the familiar confines of Earth to the unexplored frontiers of the universe. Ahead of them lies the unknown, the promise of discovery, and the potential to change humanity's understanding of its place in the cosmos. Chapter 6. First contact months into their voyage, the crew of Orion's Dawn has settled into the rhythm of life in space. The spacecraft has become their home, a bubble of humanity hurtling through the void. The routines of maintenance, research, and daily exercise fill their days, punctuated by the awe-inspiring views of the cosmos beyond their windows. As they draw closer to Neptune's orbit, the anticipation builds. The mysterious signals that led humanity to this point are stronger now, a constant reminder of the mission's purpose. Dr. Lena Nguyen and her team are the first to notice the anomaly, a deviation in the signal's pattern, something that hadn't been observed before. It suggests that they are not just approaching the source of the signals, but that the source itself is aware of their approach. Commander Jack Harper calls a meeting to discuss the discovery. The mood is tense. The possibility of encountering extraterrestrial intelligence was always part of the mission's theoretical framework, but facing the reality is altogether different. After much deliberation, the crew decides to proceed with caution, maintaining their course but preparing for any possible scenario. The moment of truth arrives without fanfare. A blip on the radar, a visual confirmation through the telescopes. A spacecraft, alien in design, moving to intercept Orion's dawn. It is a sleek, metallic vessel, its surfaces reflecting the light of the distant sun, moving with a grace and precision that speaks of advanced technology. The crew watches in silent wonder as the alien spacecraft positions itself a short distance from Orion's dawn. There is no communication, no sign of hostility, but the message is clear. They have been noticed. In a bold move, Dr. Nguyen proposes sending a greeting in the form of mathematical sequences, a universal language that might convey peaceful intentions. The crew agrees, and the message is sent, a beacon of humanity's curiosity and goodwill. The response is almost immediate. A series of tones broadcast back to Orion's dawn, mirroring the mathematical greeting but with variations that suggest a complex language. It is the first direct communication between humanity and an extraterrestrial intelligence, a historic moment that transcends the barriers of space and species. The alien spacecraft then sends a visual message, a display of light and color that is clearly intended as a form of communication. The patterns are intricate, pulsating with a rhythm that Dr. Hiro Tanaka hypothesizes could represent a form of language or art. The exchange is a cautious dance, two civilizations reaching across the vastness of space to touch, if only briefly. The crew of Orion's Dawn is acutely aware of the significance of their actions, representing not just themselves but all of humanity in this first contact. As the initial exchange concludes, the alien spacecraft remains stationary, as if waiting. The message is clear. The next move is humanity's to make. The chapter closes with the crew gathered, looking at the alien vessel through the viewport, contemplating the enormity of what has just occurred. They are no longer just explorers. They are ambassadors, standing on the threshold of a new era of interstellar relations. The universe has called, and humanity has answered. The journey forward is uncharted, but the potential for understanding, for connection, is limitless. Chapter 7 the Galactic Council. The encounter with the alien spacecraft marks the beginning of a new chapter for the crew of Orion's Dawn, 
and for humanity itself. The extraterrestrial beings, identifying themselves as the Zalarians, extend an invitation to the crew to join them aboard their vessel. With cautious optimism, Commander Jack Harper and a select team, including Dr. Lena Nguyen and Dr. Aisha Bhatti, accept the invitation, embarking on a shuttle to make the short journey to the Zalarian ship. The interior of the Zalarian spacecraft is a marvel of technology and design, blending functionality with an aesthetic that speaks to the Zalarian's advanced culture. The Zalarians themselves are bipedal and humanoid, their features distinct yet not entirely unfamiliar. They communicate through a device that translates their speech into English, facilitating a groundbreaking dialogue between the two species. The Zalarians explain that they are members of the Galactic Council, a collective of civilizations from across the galaxy, dedicated to maintaining peace and fostering cooperation among the stars. Humanity, having reached a level of technological advancement capable of interstellar communication and travel, has attracted the Council's attention, warranting an invitation to join their assembly. The Zalarians speak of the Council's role in addressing galactic threats, mediating conflicts, and sharing knowledge and resources among its members. They emphasize that while the Council does not interfere in the internal affairs of its member civilizations, it offers a platform for dialogue and mutual assistance. The invitation to join the Galactic Council is an honor, one that carries significant implications for humanity's place in the universe. It is a recognition of humanity's potential to contribute to the broader galactic community. However, the Zalarians reveal that the invitation is also born of necessity. The galaxy faces a grave threat, one that has prompted the Council to seek out new allies capable of contributing to the galactic defense. As the meeting progresses, the Zalarians detail the nature of the threat, a cosmic entity, ancient and incomprehensibly powerful, known to the Council as the Devourer. It is a force of pure destruction, consuming stars and leaving dead worlds in its wake. The Devourer is awakening, and its path leads through the galaxy, threatening countless civilizations, including potentially Earth. The revelation is sobering, casting a shadow over the historic meeting. The invitation to join the Galactic Council is not just a gesture of welcome, but a call to arms, an appeal for humanity to stand with the galaxy civilizations against a common enemy. The Zalarians offer their technology and knowledge to aid humanity in preparing for the coming conflict, emphasizing the importance of unity and cooperation in the face of such a formidable foe. They propose a partnership, one that would begin with sharing information and resources and could eventually lead to a combined galactic effort against the Devourer. As the crew of Orion's Dawn returns to their spacecraft, they are acutely aware that the mission has evolved beyond their original objectives. They are no longer just explorers. They are emissaries of Earth, bearing news that will change the course of human history. The chapter closes with the crew transmitting their findings back to Earth, their message a beacon of hope and a call to action. Humanity stands at the brink of a new era, one that will see it join a community of stars in facing a threat of cosmic proportions. The universe has called, and now, more than ever, humanity must answer. Chapter 8. The Threat Unveiled As the data streams back to Earth, detailing the encounter with the Zalarians and the grim revelation of the Devourer, the world is gripped by a mix of awe and apprehension. The knowledge that humanity is not alone in the universe is overshadowed by the looming threat of an ancient cosmic entity capable of annihilating entire star systems. Global leaders convene in emergency sessions, and the United Nations holds a special assembly to address the revelations brought back by Orion's dawn. The news of the Galactic Council's invitation and the call to arms against the Devourer sparks a frenzied response from the public and the scientific community. Debates rage over the best course of action, with some advocating for caution and others for immediate acceptance of the Council's offer. Meanwhile, the Unified Extraterrestrial Investigation Coalition, UEIC, is transformed into a provisional body to handle Earth's response. Commander Jack Harper and Dr. Lena Nguyen are among those called to present their findings and advise on the potential technological and strategic partnerships with the Zalarians and, by extension, the Galactic Council. The gravity of the situation leads to an unprecedented global initiative, codenamed Project Unity, aimed at preparing humanity for the potential threat. The project encompasses technological advancement, military preparedness, 
and diplomatic efforts to solidify Earth's place within the Galactic Council. As part of the preparations, the Zalarians provide humanity with access to advanced technologies, including energy systems, propulsion methods, and defensive capabilities far beyond current human achievements. These technologies promise not only a leap forward in human spacefaring capabilities, but also a chance to defend against the devourer. The sharing of knowledge leads to a cultural and scientific exchange, with human scientists and Zalarian experts working side by side. This collaboration fosters a sense of camaraderie and shared purpose, bridging the gap between the two species. Amidst the preparations, Dr. Aisha Bhatti spearheads a project to study the ecological impacts of the devourer's consumption of star systems, seeking to understand the entity's behavior and potential weaknesses. Her work becomes a cornerstone of the strategic planning against the devourer, offering hope that there might be a way to deter or even defeat the cosmic entity. The threat of the devourer also accelerates human efforts in space exploration and colonization, as the realization dawns that Earth's safety can no longer be taken for granted. The idea of establishing human presence on other planets and in other star systems gains traction, fueled by the urgency of the situation and the new possibilities opened by Zalarian technology. The chapter closes on a note of determined optimism. Despite the shadow cast by the devourer, humanity finds itself on the cusp of a new era. The crisis has unified the people of Earth in a way never before seen, galvanizing them to face the coming challenge head on. The universe has called, and humanity is rising to answer, armed with new allies, new technologies, and a newfound resolve to protect their home and their future among the stars. Chapter 9. Rallying the Galactic Forces In the wake of the shocking revelations about the Devourer, and with the newfound alliance with the Zalarians deepening, humanity begins to take its first steps as a member of the Galactic Council. The Council a diverse assembly of civilizations from across the galaxy, is initially skeptical of humanity's capacity to contribute significantly to the galactic effort against the devourer. However, the innovative applications of Zalarian technology by human scientists and engineers, combined with Earth's unique perspective on strategy and diplomacy, quickly earn the fledgling members' respect and a voice within the Council. Commander Jack Harper and Dr. Lena Nguyen find themselves at the forefront of this monumental effort, serving as humanity's representatives. They navigate the complex dynamics of the Council, advocating for a united front against the Devourer, and proposing innovative strategies that draw upon humanity's rich history of overcoming adversity through unity and innovation. Meanwhile, Dr. Aisha Bhatti's research into the Devourer's ecological impacts provides crucial insights into its behavior and potential vulnerabilities. Her work, once a fringe element of the coalition strategy, becomes central to the development of a plan to confront the entity. Her theories suggest that the devourer is drawn to certain types of star systems, and by understanding this preference, the Council might be able to predict its path and prepare defensive measures accordingly. As part of their efforts to rally the galactic forces, the human delegation embarks on a series of diplomatic missions to various member civilizations of the Galactic Council. Each mission is an opportunity to learn and share knowledge, forging alliances and pooling resources and technologies in preparation for the confrontation with the Devourer. One of the key alliances formed is with the Aliens, a species known for their advanced propulsion technology, which could prove vital in mobilizing the galactic fleet quickly. Another significant partnership is with the Terrellans, who possess sophisticated energy weapons that could potentially harm the Devourer. The culmination of these efforts is the formation of the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, a coalition force comprising fleets and technologies from across the Council's member civilizations. The GDI represents the galaxy's best hope against the Devourer, a tangible manifestation of the Council's unity and determination to protect their shared home. Amidst the rallying of the Galactic Forces, the crew of Orion's Dawn plays a crucial role in bridging differences and fostering a sense of camaraderie and shared purpose among the disparate members of the Council. Their journey from Earth to the heart of the Galactic Council becomes a symbol of hope and resilience, inspiring countless across the galaxy. The chapter closes with the first joint exercise of the GDI, a demonstration of unity and strength as fleets from across the galaxy assemble in a show of force.
As ships from countless worlds maneuver together against a backdrop of stars, the message is clear. The galaxy stands united against the Devourer, ready to defend their civilization and their future. The universe has called, and together, they answer. Chapter 10 The training begins with the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI. Formally established, the focus shifts to preparing the Allied forces for the confrontation with the Devourer. This preparation involves not just the integration and training of diverse military fleets, but also the unification of scientific, technological, and strategic resources from across the Galactic Council's member civilizations. The GDI sets up a series of training bases throughout strategically significant sectors, places where the combined fleets can drill in coordinated maneuvers, test new weapon systems, and simulate encounters with the Devourer, based on Dr. Aisha Bhatti's ecological predictions. Commander Jack Harper, leveraging his experience and leadership, is appointed to oversee the training of a mixed species task force, a role that highlights humanity's rapid ascent from newcomers to key players in the galactic stage. His task force, a microcosm of the GDI's diversity, includes ships and personnel from the aliens and Terrellans, among others. The integration process is fraught with challenges, from language barriers and cultural differences to the adaptation of technologies and combat doctrines. Dr. Lena Nguyen and her scientific team collaborate closely with their counterparts from other civilizations, pooling their knowledge to devise strategies to exploit the devourer's weaknesses. This collaboration leads to breakthroughs in weapon and shield technology, incorporating Zalarian energy systems with Terrellan weaponry and alien propulsion technology, creating hybrid systems more effective than any single civilization's technology. The training exercises are intense, designed to forge the disparate elements of the GDI into a cohesive fighting force. Simulations range from large-scale battles to specialized scenarios focusing on evacuation, rescue, and defense of critical systems. Throughout these exercises, the crews learn to communicate and operate as a unit, finding common ground in their shared mission. One of the most significant challenges is developing a unified command structure that respects the autonomy and expertise of each civilization while ensuring effective coordination and decision-making. The GDI adopts a decentralized command model, with Commander Harper and a council of representatives from each participating civilization making strategic decisions while allowing for operational flexibility at the unit level. Amidst the rigorous training and planning, bonds of camaraderie and mutual respect begin to form among the GDI members. Shared meals, cultural exchanges, and joint celebrations become as much a part of the training bases as the tactical drills and strategy sessions. These interactions not only bolster morale, but also reinforce the sense of a united front against a common enemy. As the training progresses, simulated encounters with the Devourer become increasingly complex and realistic, testing the GDI's readiness to face the cosmic entity. A major breakthrough occurs when Dr. Body's team successfully predicts the Devourer's next target, a remote star system. This prediction allows the GDI to plan a live exercise, a mock battle in the target system, to test their readiness and adjust their strategies based on real-world conditions. The chapter closes on the eve of this pivotal exercise, with the GDI fleet assembled and ready to embark on the simulated defense of the star system. The air is thick with tension and anticipation, but also with a sense of unity and purpose. The crews of hundreds of ships representing dozens of civilizations stand together, ready to face the darkness. The training begins in earnest, a crucial step in preparing for the inevitable confrontation with the Devourer. The universe has called, and the Galactic Defense Initiative answers with determination and hope. Chapter 11 the Battle Strategy As the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, finalizes its preparations for the simulated defense exercise, strategic meetings intensify, focusing on the development of a comprehensive battle plan to confront the Devourer. The exercise's objective is not only to test the GDI's combat readiness, but also to refine tactics and technologies that will be crucial in the impending real confrontation. Dr. Aisha Bhatti's predictive model which successfully identified the Devourer's next likely target, becomes the cornerstone of the GDI's strategic planning. Her research suggests 
that the devourer's movements are not random, but follow a pattern influenced by the energy output of star systems. This insight gives the GDI a strategic advantage, allowing them to anticipate potential targets and prepare defenses accordingly. The battle strategy is a multi-layered approach designed to exploit the devourer's weaknesses while minimizing the risk to the GDI forces and the systems they protect. The plan involves three key phases. 1. Attrition and Analysis The first phase involves deploying remote-operated drones and autonomous weapon platforms to engage the devourer, gathering data on its defenses and attack patterns. This phase aims to probe the devourer's capabilities without risking manned vessels, using the data collected to adjust tactics in real time. 2. Harassment and Disruption Utilizing the mobility of the alien propulsion technology, small fighter squadrons and swift attack craft will harass the devourer, targeting its sensory apparatus and smaller, more vulnerable appendages. This phase is designed to distract and disorient the devourer, disrupting its ability to consume stellar material effectively. 3. Decisive Strike the final phase involves concentrating the GDI's firepower on identified weak points in the devourer's structure. The Torellan energy weapons, enhanced with Zalarian and human technology, play a critical role in delivering precise high-energy attacks. Simultaneously, defensive units will protect the inhabited planets and installations within the system, employing shield technologies and evacuation protocols developed through the collaboration of GDI members. Commander Jack Harper and his task force are selected to lead the decisive strike phase, a testament to humanity's significant role in the GDI. His leadership and the diverse capabilities of his crew symbolize the unity and determination of the Allied forces. In the days leading up to the exercise, the GDI fleet gathers at the edge of the designated star system. Ships from across the galaxy, each with its unique design and capabilities, form a mosaic of the Council's commitment to defense against the Devourer. Crews make final preparations, reviewing their roles in the upcoming operation, while commanders coordinate their units, ensuring that every element of the plan is understood and ready for execution. The chapter culminates with the beginning of the simulated defense exercise. The first phase launches smoothly, with drones advancing to engage the simulated devourer. As data streams back to the command ships, adjustments are made, tactics refined. The anticipation builds as the fleet prepares to transition to the harassment and disruption phase, with fighter squadrons ready to launch their daring assaults. The exercise, a critical test of the GDI's readiness, unfolds under the watchful eyes of the Galactic Council and the universe itself. It is a moment of truth, a demonstration of the collective will to preserve life and civilization in the face of an existential threat. The battle strategy, born of necessity and innovation, is about to be tested in the forge of simulated combat. The universe has called, and the GDI's response is a testament to the strength found in unity and the enduring hope for a future free from the shadow of the devourer. Chapter 12. Into the Heart of Darkness The simulated defense exercise against a virtual model of the devourer transitions into its second phase, the harassment and disruption, with agility and precision that speaks volumes of the Galactic Defense Initiative's GDI preparedness. Fighter squadrons, leveraging the alien propulsion technology for unmatched speed and maneuverability, dart forward, executing their harassment maneuvers. Their targets are the simulated sensory arrays and minor appendages of the devourer, aiming to disrupt its ability to consume stellar material and to prepare for the decisive strike. As the exercise progresses, the data gathered during the attrition and analysis phase prove invaluable. The drones, having engaged the simulated entity, have returned with critical insights into its defensive capabilities and potential weak spots. This information allows the GDI forces to adapt their tactics in real time, increasing the efficacy of their harassment operations. The unity and cooperation among the diverse members of the GDI, fostered over months of rigorous training and shared experiences, shine through. Communication between units is seamless, with commands and updates relayed instantly across the fleet, ensuring a coordinated effort that keeps the simulated devourer off balance. Commander Jack Harper, aboard the flagship of the task force designated for the decisive strike, monitors the operation's progress. 
His calm and steady leadership, underpinned by the trust and respect of his crew and allied commanders, is a stabilizing force. He gives the order to prepare for the transition to the final phase, the culmination of the GDI's strategy. Meanwhile, on the scientific front, Dr. Lina Nguyen and Dr. Aisha Bhatti work tirelessly, analyzing the incoming data to refine their understanding of the devourer's weaknesses. Their collaboration, emblematic of the broader scientific partnership within the GDI, leads to a last-minute adjustment to the targeting parameters for the decisive strike, optimizing the chances of success. As the harassment and disruption phase draws to a close, the simulated devourer appears significantly impaired, its responses delayed and erratic, a testament to the effectiveness of the GDI's tactics. The moment for the decisive strike arrives, a coordinated attack on the simulated entity's vulnerabilities, intended to simulate the delivery of a crippling blow. The fleets position themselves, with the main artillery units aligning their Trellin energy weapons, now enhanced with human and Zalarian technology, for maximum impact. The tension is palpable, a silent anticipation that stretches across the void of space. Commander Harper gives the command, and the fleet unleashes its firepower. Brilliant beams of energy converge on the simulated devourer, striking with precision. The simulation responds, simulating the catastrophic failure of the entity's core structures, a visual confirmation of the strategy's potential effectiveness. However, the simulation is not without its lessons. The GDI's victory is Pyrrhic, with significant simulated casualties and the realization that defeating the Devourer will require sacrifices. The exercise highlights areas for improvement, particularly in minimizing exposure to counterattacks and enhancing defensive measures for civilian populations. In the aftermath of the exercise, the GDI regroups, reviewing the outcomes and integrating the lessons learned. The simulated encounter with the Devourer though a construct, has brought into sharp focus the challenges and dangers of the impending real confrontation. The chapter closes with the GDI fleet, returning to their respective bases, the experience of the exercise fresh in their minds. There is a sobering understanding that the path ahead is fraught with peril, but also a reinforced resolve. The unity and determination of the GDI, strengthened by the trial, stand as a beacon of hope. Into the heart of darkness, they will carry the light of myriad civilizations, united in their purpose to protect the galaxy from the devourer. The universe has called, and together, they move towards answering that call with courage and conviction. Chapter 13. Sacrifices Made In the weeks following the simulated defense exercise, the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, shifts its focus from theoretical strategies to the palpable reality of an impending confrontation with the Devourer. The exercise's aftermath leaves the Allied forces with much to ponder, particularly the simulated losses, which cast a shadow over the coalition. The realization that victory against such a formidable foe might come at a tremendous cost weighs heavily on everyone's minds. Commander Jack Harper, bearing the responsibility of leadership, grapples with the potential sacrifices his decisions may necessitate. The burden of command has never felt heavier, knowing that the lives of countless individuals, both military and civilian, across multiple civilizations, could hang in the balance. Dr. Lena Nguyen, too, faces her own set of challenges. The success of the scientific endeavors against the devourer hinges on her team's ability to innovate and adapt under pressure. The prospect of failure and the potential loss of life that could entail drives her to push the boundaries of science and technology even further. As preparations for the real confrontation with the Devourer continue, the GDI receives alarming intelligence. The Devourer is on the move, its path leading directly toward a populated star system at the edge of the Galactic Council's territory. The system, known as the Helios Cluster, is home to several inhabited planets and millions of lives. The GDI makes the difficult decision to use the Helios Cluster as the battleground for their first real engagement with the Devourer. This decision is not made lightly. The potential for civilian casualties is high. However, the strategic importance of defending this system and the opportunity to confront the Devourer before it reaches more densely populated areas compels the GDI to proceed. The fleets assemble at the Helios Cluster, with humanity's representatives among them, 
ready to face the devourer. The air is thick with tension and resolve, the weight of what's to come bearing down on every soldier, scientist, and civilian involved in the operation. The confrontation begins with the devourer appearing at the edge of the system, its massive form dwarfing the assembled GDI fleet. The initial skirmishes are harrowing, with the GDI forces engaging the devourer with everything they have learned and prepared. Despite their efforts, the devourer's power is overwhelming, its ability to absorb energy and matter making it a seemingly insurmountable opponent. In the heat of battle, a critical moment arises. A squadron, led by Commander Harper, identifies a vulnerability in the devourer's defenses, a chance to deliver a significant blow. However, exploiting this weakness requires a close-range attack, putting the squadron at great risk. With a heavy heart, Harper orders the attack, knowing it may be a one-way mission. The squadron, understanding the stakes, proceeds with valor, managing to inflict critical damage on the devourer, but at the cost of their own lives. The sacrifice is felt deeply across the GDI fleet, a poignant reminder of the battle's stakes. The chapter closes on a somber note with the GDI forces regrouping and assessing the aftermath of the encounter. The victory, though minor, is overshadowed by the loss of brave souls who made the ultimate sacrifice. Their actions, born of courage and a commitment to the greater good, become a rallying cry for the GDI, a reminder of what is at stake and the price of freedom and survival in the galaxy. The sacrifices made in the Helios Cluster are a testament to the resilience and bravery of those who stand against the Devourer. As the GDI prepares for the next phase of the conflict, the memory of those lost serves as a powerful motivation to continue the fight, ensuring their sacrifices were not in vain. The universe has called, and in the face of darkness, the light of heroism and determination shines brightly. Chapter 14 The Turning Tide After the bitter confrontation at the Helios Cluster, the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, is left to mourn its losses while also facing the stark reality that the Devourer is far from defeated. The sacrifice of Commander Harper's squadron has provided valuable data on the Devourer's vulnerabilities, but at a devastating cost. The morale within the GDI is at its lowest, the weight of the losses and the daunting prospect of future battles casting long shadows over the Coalition. In this atmosphere of grief and determination, Dr. Lena Nguyen makes a breakthrough that offers a glimmer of hope. Building on the data collected during the confrontation, her team develops a weapon capable of targeting the Devourer's newly identified vulnerabilities. This weapon, a highly advanced form of energy projectile, can potentially penetrate the Devourer's defenses and cause significant damage. The development of the weapon is a testament to the resilience and innovation of the GDI's scientific community. It represents a tangible result of the sacrifices made, a beacon of hope that those lives were not lost in vain. The weapon's design is a collaborative effort, incorporating elements from several civilizations within the GDI, each contributing their unique technologies and insights. With this new weapon, the GDI begins to plan its next encounter with the Devourer, this time with a strategy that holds the promise of a more decisive impact. The mood among the fleet shifts from one of somber reflection to cautious optimism. Training intensifies with simulations focusing on the deployment and effectiveness of the new weapon. The sense of unity and purpose that has always been the GDI's strength is rekindled as the Coalition prepares to take the fight to the Devourer once again. Amidst the preparations, a diplomatic mission to non-member civilizations brings unexpected allies to the GDI's cause. News of the Initiative's efforts and the sacrifices made at the Helios Cluster has spread inspiring other systems and species to contribute to the fight against the Devourer. This influx of support bolsters the GDI's ranks, providing additional resources and manpower for the upcoming confrontation. Commander Jack Harper, his resolve hardened by the loss of his squadron, becomes a symbol of the GDI's resilience. His leadership and unwavering commitment to the mission galvanize the forces, reminding them of the stakes involved and the importance of their unity in the face of adversity. The chapter culminates with the GDI fleet, now larger and more determined than ever, moving into position for the next engagement with the Devourer. The new weapon is ready, its potential a source of hope for a turning tide in the conflict. The final moments before the encounter are tense, filled with the collective breath of countless beings, each aware of the moment's significance. 
As the fleets position themselves, the vastness of space around them a silent witness to their stand, there's a moment of profound unity among the diverse members of the GDI. Regardless of origin, each individual is focused on a singular goal, to protect their home, their way of life, and the future of the galaxy itself. The chapter closes on the brink of battle, the GDI standing as a testament to what can be achieved when civilizations unite against a common threat. The turning tide is not just about the potential of their new weapon, but about the strength found in unity, the power of shared purpose, and the enduring hope that darkness can be overcome with light. The universe has called, and the GDI answers with a chorus of defiance, ready to change the course of the conflict once and for all. Chapter 15 The Final Assault The tension in the void of space is palpable as the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, forces position themselves for what is anticipated to be the defining battle against the Devourer. This time, armed with the newly developed weapon and bolstered by the support of new allies, there is a tangible sense of hope that the tide of the conflict can indeed be turned. Commander Jack Harper, at the helm of the flagship, oversees the final checks and preparations. His presence is a calming force amid the storm of anticipation, his resolve mirrored in the eyes of his crew and the allied forces arrayed before him. The unity of purpose that has brought together so many disparate civilizations against a common foe is more evident than ever a testament to the potential for cooperation and understanding in the galaxy. As the GDI forces begin their approach, the Devourer looms ahead, a dark behemoth against the backdrop of stars. Its size and power are unmatched, but so is the determination of those arrayed against it. The battle commences with a barrage of energy projectiles designed to test the Devourer's defenses and probe for weaknesses. The GDI forces maneuver with precision, the lessons of past encounters informing their tactics. Dr. Lena Nguyen, coordinating with the scientific teams, monitors the effectiveness of the new weapon in real time. Early results are promising. The energy projectiles penetrate the devourer's outer defenses more effectively than any previous attempts. Encouraged by these initial successes, the GDI forces intensify their assault, focusing their fire on the vulnerabilities identified by Nguyen's team. The battle rages on, a maelstrom of energy and destruction. The GDI forces, nimble and relentless, manage to avoid the worst of the Devourer's counterattacks. Their coordination and shared tactics a stark contrast to the brute force of their adversary. Amidst the chaos, a squadron led by Commander Harper makes a daring run, delivering a concentrated volley of the new weapon directly into one of the Devourer's critical vulnerabilities. The effect is immediate and dramatic. The Devourer falters, its movements becoming erratic as the energy from the weapons disrupts its ability to consume and regenerate. For the first time, the seemingly invincible entity shows signs of weakness, a crack in the armor that the GDI forces are quick to exploit. As the battle turns in their favor, the GDI forces press their advantage, their attacks becoming more focused and relentless. The Devourer, beset on all sides and unable to counter the coordinated assault, begins to retreat its form dissipating as it attempts to escape into the void. The GDI forces, sensing victory, continue their pursuit, determined to end the threat of the Devourer once and for all. In a final concerted effort, they unleash the full power of the new weapon, a brilliant torrent of energy that engulfs the Devourer. The aftermath is a moment of stunned silence. The Devourer, the cosmic entity that had brought so much fear and destruction, is no more. Its form dissipates into the void, leaving behind only the remnants of its existence. The GDI fleet, battered but victorious, takes stock of their achievement. The sense of relief and triumph is palpable, a shared joy that transcends language and species. They have done the impossible, defeating an enemy that had seemed invincible. Commander Harper, looking out into the void where the Devourer once was, feels the weight of the moment. This victory is not just for the GDI or for any one civilization, but for the entire galaxy. It is a testament to what can be achieved when beings unite for a common cause, overcoming differences to face a shared threat. The chapter closes on the GDI fleet beginning the journey back to their home systems, their ships carrying the scars of battle, but also the pride of their accomplishment. The galaxy will remember this day, the day when unity and courage triumphed over darkness, 
the universe called, and together they answered, securing a future for all. Chapter 16 Aftermath In the wake of the Devourer's defeat, the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI Fleet, lingers in the space where the final battle took place, the remnants of the cosmic entity slowly dispersing into the void. The victory, monumental and hard fought, is a moment for the history books, a testament to the resilience and unity of the galaxy's diverse civilizations. Yet the aftermath is not without its challenges and reflections. Commander Jack Harper, standing on the bridge of the flagship, surveys the fleet, noting the damage sustained by the ships and the palpable exhaustion of their crews. The cost of their victory, in lives and resources, weighs heavily on him and his counterparts from other civilizations. The immediate concern is the welfare of the fleet and the reconstruction efforts that must begin in the systems affected by the devourer's path of destruction. Dr. Lena Nguyen, alongside her team and their colleagues from other species, begins the task of analyzing the data collected during the battle. Their goal is to understand the devourer better, ensuring that if a similar threat should ever emerge again, the galaxy will be better prepared. Their work is crucial, not only for the scientific community, but also for the safety of future generations. The GDI convenes a series of debriefings and ceremonies to honor those who were lost in the conflict. Across the galaxy, monuments are planned and remembrance services are held, celebrating the bravery and sacrifice of those who fought. These moments of commemoration bring together beings from all corners of the galaxy, a reflection of the unity that was forged in the face of existential threat. The political landscape of the galaxy is forever changed by the conflict. The Galactic Council, recognizing the need for a more proactive approach to galactic defense, begins discussions on reforms and the establishment of a permanent GDI. Humanity, once newcomers to the galactic community, finds themselves at the forefront of these discussions, their contributions during the conflict earning them newfound respect and influence. Reconstruction efforts begin in earnest, with technology and resources being shared across civilization lines. Worlds that had been in the devourer's path start the long process of rebuilding, supported by the GDI and the wider galactic community. The spirit of cooperation that had been the cornerstone of the GDI's success continues, shaping the recovery efforts and promising a brighter future for all involved. Amidst the rebuilding, there's a sense of a new dawn for the galaxy. The threat of the devourer brought untold destruction but it also ushered in an era of unprecedented unity and cooperation. Civilizations that had once been rivals or strangers now work side by side, their combined efforts a beacon of hope. Commander Harper, reflecting on the journey from the first mysterious signals to the defeat of the Devourer, realizes that the galaxy has been irrevocably changed. The challenges ahead are many, but so are the opportunities for peace, for exploration, and for a shared future. The chapter closes on the GDI fleet preparing to return to their respective homes, their mission complete, but aware that this victory is just the beginning of a new chapter in galactic history. The universe called, and they answered, not just to confront a threat, but to forge a legacy of unity that will define the galaxy for generations to come. Chapter 17. A New Dawn for the Galaxy as the dust settles in the aftermath of the monumental victory against the Devourer, the galaxy stands on the brink of a new era. The Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI, initially formed as a temporary coalition to face a cosmic threat, has evolved into a symbol of unity and cooperation among the stars. The victory celebrations slowly give way to deliberations about the future, discussions imbued with the spirit of collaboration that had led to their triumph. The Galactic Council, with humanity now among its more influential members, convenes to discuss the establishment of a permanent GDI. This new entity would not only serve as a guardian against potential cosmic threats, but also as a beacon of unity, promoting peace and cooperation across the galaxy. The proposal receives overwhelming support, a testament to the shared desire for a future where no civilization stands alone against the darkness. Commander Jack Harper, recognized as a hero of the conflict, takes on a leading role in shaping the new GDI. His experiences and those of his crew become foundational to the principles guiding this nascent organization. Harper advocates for a structure that emphasizes mutual respect 
equality among civilizations, and the importance of preparedness and resilience. Dr. Lina Nguyen, her reputation as a brilliant scientist, further solidified by her contributions during the battle, leads a council of researchers and scientists within the GDI framework. This council's mandate is to advance scientific collaboration across civilizations, turning the focus toward exploration, discovery, and the shared stewardship of the galaxy. The reconstruction efforts in the systems affected by the devourer's path become a priority for the new GDI. Technologies and resources flow freely, with joint reconstruction teams working tirelessly to rebuild worlds and restore hope to those affected. These efforts are a tangible manifestation of the new era of cooperation, with former barriers between civilizations crumbling in the face of shared purpose. As part of its mission to prevent future threats, the GDI establishes a network of early warning systems and research outposts at strategic points across the galaxy. These installations, staffed by mixed species crews, are tasked with monitoring the cosmos for signs of danger and advancing the frontiers of scientific knowledge. The spirit of exploration, rekindled by the United Stand Against the Devourer, leads to a golden age of discovery. The GDI sponsors expeditions into uncharted regions, seeking to understand the mysteries of the universe and to find new friends among the stars. These missions, carried out by diverse crews, embody the galaxy's newfound commitment to exploration and understanding. Amidst these developments, the people of the galaxy take a moment to reflect on the journey they have undertaken. From the initial fear and uncertainty to the unity and strength that emerged in the face of adversity, the conflict with the devourer has reshaped the galaxy in profound ways. The memories of those lost in the battle are preserved, a reminder of the cost of peace and the value of unity. The chapter closes on a galaxy transformed. The stars, once remote and isolated, now shine as beacons of hope and cooperation. The GDI, with its diverse membership and shared mission, stands ready to face whatever challenges the future might hold, secure in the knowledge that unity is their greatest strength. The universe called, and the galaxy answered, not with fear, but with a collective determination to build a future where all can thrive together. A new dawn has arrived, bringing with it endless possibilities and the promise of a united galaxy. Chapter 18. Homecoming and Legacy The return of the Galactic Defense Initiative, GDI fleet, to their respective homeworlds is a series of events marked by joyous celebrations, heartfelt reunions, and reflective commemorations. Across the galaxy, from bustling urban centers on advanced planets to tranquil colonies on remote outposts, the heroes of the conflict against the Devourer are welcomed back as saviors and architects of a new era of galactic unity. For Commander Jack Harper and the human contingent of the GDI, their return to Earth is a momentous occasion. The Blue Planet, once a relatively unknown and minor player on the galactic stage, now stands as a central figure in the newly unified galaxy. The sight of home, with its familiar continents and oceans, stirs deep emotions in the crew a poignant reminder of what they fought to protect. The homecoming is broadcast worldwide, a global event that transcends borders and unites humanity in a collective celebration. People from all walks of life gather in public squares, homes, and institutions to watch as the heroes of the GDI disembark, their faces telling tales of sacrifice, courage, and triumph. Commander Harper, stepping onto the tarmac, is greeted with cheers and applause a hero's welcome for the man who led humanity's defense against a cosmic threat. In the days that follow, the GDI members are honored in a series of ceremonies and events. Governments, organizations, and communities present awards and accolades, recognizing not just the valor of these individuals, but also the spirit of cooperation that their actions represent. Among these ceremonies, a special session at the United Nations stands out, where Commander Harper, and key members of the GDI team share their experiences and the lessons learned from the conflict. The legacy of the battle against the devourer extends beyond the celebrations and honors. Inspired by the unity and collaboration that marked humanity's response to the threat, there is a renewed commitment to global cooperation and understanding. The establishment of the GDI as a permanent entity offers a framework for this cooperation with Earth playing a pivotal role in its operations and initiatives. Educational institutions, 
introduced new curricula focused on galactic history, science, and diplomacy, emphasizing the importance of understanding and cooperation among civilizations. Young minds are inspired by the stories of the GDI, fueling dreams of exploration and discovery among the stars. Memorials are erected in honor of those who were lost in the conflict, solemn reminders of the cost of peace and security. These sites become places of reflection and gratitude, symbols of the sacrifices made for the greater good. The impact of the conflict and the victory against the devourer also leads to an outpouring of artistic expression. Films, literature, music, and art capture the essence of the struggle, the unity, and the triumph, contributing to a cultural renaissance that celebrates the diversity and resilience of life across the galaxy. As the celebrations fade and life returns to normalcy, the members of the GDI find themselves adapting to a world forever changed by their actions. Commander Harper, Dr. Lena Nguyen, and their colleagues continue to serve, guided by a sense of duty to protect and explore the galaxy. Their efforts, and those of countless others across the galaxy, ensure that the legacy of the GDI will endure, a beacon of hope and unity in the vast expanse of space. The chapter, and the story, closes on a note of hopeful contemplation. The universe called, and through courage, sacrifice, and unity, humanity and their galactic neighbors answered. Now, as stewards of a new era, they look to the stars not as distant lights in the night sky, but as destinations, as homes, and as reminders of what can be achieved when the galaxy stands together. The future is unwritten, a canvas stretched wide and waiting for the brushstrokes of those who dare to dream, explore, and discover.